Before we get into how we make the dishes, let me tell you guys, I uploaded this mukbang, because me and Joe are about to have a mukbang, first. All right, so go check that video out first. It's up in the card somewhere. Go check out the mukbang and then come back and see how to make the dishes. Welcome to the Bear Pantry Show. If you're looking for authentic Belizean recipes, then you're in the right place. My name is Barbara and this is Cooking Made Simple. So because there's a lot of preparing when making these type of dishes, I'm starting early. It is 11.36, I want to do this for lunch for like one o'clock. So I'm doing the sauce first for the cabbage, well, the cabbage sauce for the salbutes, all right? So when Miriam, my uncle's girlfriend, taught me how to make the salbutes, she does cabbage, she does Roma tomatoes and cilantro, which I just washed. Well, I picked it from the stems first and then I washed it. Now when I did the cabbage, I washed it and I peeled off the, the outer layers. You guys do that with your lettuce and your cabbage. I never do the outer layers. And I've learned a long time ago, not like when it comes to lettuce, not to just like tear it apart with your hand. I always cut with a knife because there was once upon a time, like in the early 1980s, where people were actually putting hypodermic needles in the vegetable like that. So we never like break apart with our hands. So I use my little knife, um, what do you call this thing? A cabbage shredder thingy to go ahead. It's a knife, you know, this is actually a knife because it can cut like this, see? You can actually cut like that with it. So it is, did you guys see that? It's actually a knife. So I use that to shred and I'm just chopping up here. And this is gonna be the sauce for the salbutis. Now, normally, Belizeans will use that vinegar, part for part vinegar and water for this sauce, but Miriam told me to use Italian. And I like fat-free, let me see this, yeah, fat-free. Fat-free Italian because it has more sugar in it. So it really gives it a nice flavor, okay? So let me just go ahead and chop, and then I'm gonna dice up my tomatoes, and then we're gonna um, assemble this sauce, okay? So we're doing three dishes today, so I have another sauce to do after this one. That's gonna be the sauce for the panadas, all right? So I'll be back. All right guys, so this is why we got Roma tomatoes because the other tomatoes are too juicy, but even so, these ones are kind of juicy. I don't want all that juice to go in there. I should really drain it in something. I'm just making a mess. Let me go ahead and put my cilantro in. And I just kind of cut off the top of the Roma tomato and make it have some type of bottom so it won't slip. And then I just dice it up fine like this. Let me put it here so you guys can see. Okay. Let me go ahead and grab a cloth to clean up this mess, guys. Give me a moment. So how is your day going, by the way? How is your day going? I'm having a beautiful day today because I'm preparing for this mukbang that you would have seen already. I'm going to upload the mukbang first, and then I'm going to show you how I did all these dishes in one video. I'm so glad that you guys have enjoyed the, um, my holiday to Belize, my 2013 <laughs> holiday to Belize. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it. And I didn't mean to like clickbait you guys, making you think I was there. But if you watch my show often, I did tell you in the prior mukbang that I was gonna re-edit that video because Google was showing it around town. Why should I not re-edit it if Google is showing it around town? So I'm just getting off some of the stems here. This is already looking so gorgeous, isn't it? So grab this, this is all washed off. I know the CDC is saying, well, the thing is not transmitted you know, so um, readily through touching the, this item that comes to your house. Mm, I don't trust them. I don't use Clorox wipe, but I wash everything off with soap and water. So this is already washed off. You don't need no salt, no black pepper, nothing. This dressing and the cabbage, the tomato, and the, um, you call it, the cilantro. Don't get it too wet because you can always dress it up some more when it's time to serve, okay? So just start it off like this first. And I don't see why you can't put some jalapenos in this. I might opt to do that in a little bit. We'll see. There's nothing saying you can't do that, all right? Or if you're in the least, some, ooh, some habanero, you know? Not habanero, but habanero. <laughs> Because it's 
I think it's a Spanish pronunciation, so the H is silent. This look wet enough to me right now because I don't want it to sit there and get soaked. I'll put a little bit more. I'll put a little bit more. Now to do the um let me get off this ring, it's making a noise here. Oh, this corn is not a part of the mini today, but Joe got it on sale and he's gonna cook it in a little while. We might put it in a mukbang just for you know the imager imagery of it, but we'll see. Yeah, this is good. No spice needed. Everything's coming off of the um, let me turn it this way so you guys can see. Yeah. Everything's coming off of the salad dressing. And you can use the regular Italian if you like, but personally, I like the fat-free one because it has a little bit more sugar in it and it does give this a really great flavor. If you don't like cilantro, don't ask Barbara what to replace it with because I don't know. I really and truly don't know. I happen to love cilantro and so does my family. This is done. I'm going to put some shrink wrap over this and when I come back, I'm going to be shredding some more cabbage because for the panades, you can either do just an onion sauce or you could mix the onion with cabbage and we like it that way, all right? So I'll be right back. So I chopped up the cabbage, right? And then I used the white onion because that's all I had. Well, we have some yellow ones, but the white ones Joe just got. And this is some, um, aban not habanero, some jalapeno. I'm thinking habanero because that's what normally goes in the thingy, right? So I have one of these things for dough, bench scraper, whatever this is called. Oh, oh, don't make a mess. It's always just easier to bench scrape your stuff off the cutting board. Mm-hmm. Mm. That already smells good. Pour some distilled white vinegar. It's a good three-fourths of a cup, I would say. Some water. And looking for a big fork. Stir it up. Now this you want to put some salt and some black pepper. So let's just sprinkle some. And remember you're normally eating this with panade so the, the fish has salt so don't overdo that okay. Stir it up. I think I'll put some more of the, um, the peppers to make it give it some more color. Mm -hmm. This is, the onion is burning my eyes and everything smells good. Let me get the stems on. I don't like the stems when I'm doing this type of stuff. All right, so the sauces are ready. This is for the panades and I have the sauce for the salbutes. Now what I think I'm gonna do next is make the sauce for the panucho and it's not this type of sauce. It's like a cull type thing that we do in tamales but it's a thinner cull, okay? So let me go ahead and move on to that. Mm-hmm. Let me go ahead and put this in here first. Though. Don't get this on my camera. I'm going to get a spatula and get everything on. I just don't want it to clink in your ear. And then I'm going to cover that up with the lid that this thing comes with. Put it on the fridge. And then when I come back, we're going to be making the call for the, um, the sauce for the panuccio. I am just picking out some of the black pieces of the cilantro right here. So I have some onions diced up, well half of an onion diced up, some cilantro. I think I have another bag with cilantro that I'll check, but let's see. Let's light the stove. This is a half a pot of water. This is like, I think this is a four quart pot. Half a pot of water. I'm going to bring this to a boil and then put these in. I'm going to find more cilantro. I don't have any El Pato tomato sauce and I'm not going to send you to the store because we're still under quarantine here in California right now. And you're only supposed to go out when you definitely have to. And going to the store is one of the things you're not supposed to be doing. So the tomato sauce, which is the El Pato, would make the pot, you know, the, the thing red. So I'm going to put the ricotta or the annatto, achiote, whatever you know it by. A lot of you have been calling, asking me where to get that. Because, you know, my dad doesn't distribute any of that stuff anymore. And um, my answer to you is I don't know. Check my Amazon store. I've linked up, you know, with different ones that I found on Amazon. But that would be my best guess. All right. So what I'm doing here, I have some masa. This is about, I don't know if this is a whole pound of the masa because Joe bought five pounds. It might be a pound. 
kind of heavy. And I'm just doing some warm water to make this into a paste. Okay? Just be careful because it's going to squirt and I want to get it on my camera. So this is the sauce for the panucho. It is somewhat of a um, cull. Can Joe see me? Because the camera seems like it's over there, guys. Tell me something. It's Joe, on. turn on. to your right. It's on you. Yes. Joe, to your right. I'm going to do like Auntie Fee. Auntie Fee used to say, on me. On me. <laughs> she used to direct while she was on camera. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make this into a paste. And um, have it set aside for when, it's, when the pot's ready, okay? So we're still making sauces. We didn't get to the main stuff yet. Let me have Joe show this right here. Get this camera out of the way, Josie. Joe rotisserie the chicken the other day in the toaster oven. And that's what we're going to use to make all this dish. As soon as the water comes to a boil, dump the onion and the cilantro in. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of the... Thanks a lot, cover. This is, I hope this is not that, um, it's ricotta. I thought it could be cayenne, you know, we put stuff in stuff. So put a little bit in there just to give it some color. Get to that in a second. And I'm wondering, because I need that El Pato, because I only need it for the color and the heat. I wonder if I can blend some of this. This came from the food bank. Um, I'm going to see if I can blend some of this and get it smooth and put it in there, okay? Give me a sec. Looks smooth enough. It's gonna give it some color and some heat. Mm -hmm. Cause the sauce is supposed to look like super smooth. I'm just gonna let this reduce a little bit, and then I'm gonna add this through the strainer. Okay. Meanwhile, what I'm going to do is move on to taking care of the meats. We're going to need this masa for the outside of the stuff, but set it aside. Let me grab this meat that Joe highly seasoned. I'm going to get the skin off. When making these type of things, it's better to do like the fattier part of the chicken, like the thighs and stuff, but I don't have that. So we have to work with what we have. Costco is only allowing three chickens per person. Plus, well, three set of chicken, right? I don't have money to do all of that, so I'm just going to go ahead and chop this up. Then I'm going to set it aside in a bowl because when I come back, I'm going to be taking care of the fish and the beans for the panadas, all right? Just stick with me, guys. Follow the sequence because I'm doing everything at once and I want to tape it the way I'm doing it, okay? I'm just going to do half a teaspoon of the salt to start because I'm not sure how much salt that picante thing, that paste thing had in. Alright? So half and half. We're going to taste. But, this is what I'm going to try to do now. Put it right there. Strain it, okay? Get somebody to help you. Like right now my helper is running a camera, so I got to do what I got to do. Is it coming, guys? Yeah. Move fast, because this tends to lump up on you. And this is the same way that I make um, the cull for tamales. Except I make the cull thicker, okay? This is going to be thin. If it lumps up, don't cry. If it doesn't want to get smooth we're gonna strain it all through the strainer again okay and I have my skillet ready to the left of me because I'm gonna do the fish for the panales and I've already cut up the chicken let me turn my temperature down a little because this is my big double burner It needs a little bit more salt, but it has enough pepper. So let me put the half a teaspoon that I held back. Come on, come on. 
I never want to scrape anything from the edge here into it because it's coming good. And it's going to pop. Okay, see how it's popping? If it's too thick, add a little bit more water because we want this thin to spread as a sauce. I'm just going to open this and drain it and throw this in there last. We're going to set this aside for when we're ready to serve. Okay, it's still lumpy, so I'm just going to cook it a little bit more. Squish some of the lumps like this, okay? So it did not want to unlump, so I'm just putting it through the strainer again, okay? We want it smooth like this. Hmm? Smooth operator. Who sings that? Is it Chardet? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it hurts. I'm going to put it back in the pot, though, because we want to heat it up when we make the dish a little bit later on, okay? So I'll be back to take care of the tuna for the panadas. Remember I told you we're taking care of all the meats. I've returned it back to the pot. Now I'm just going to grab a wooden spoon and give this a stir. Yeah, this is really smooth. Now it's time for me to add my peas and I've drained the peas from the can. Okay. Let me stir it, but make sure that I don't bust any of the peas, right? And then cover it up and set this aside because we're going to come back to this in an hour or so. So I found a little bit of jalapeno left. You know, because this is Belizean food, it should all be habanero. I said that already, right? But I like jalapeno because it's less hot. So we just want to cook this until it's a little bit dry, but not too dry. Hush Wednesday. She knows she's going to go for a walk. Joshua's getting ready to take her for a walk. So this is ready. So what I'm going to do is refry a little bit of beans that we cooked the other day. Because Joshua likes beans, but it's not fish. And then the last thing I'm going to do is prepare this for what we're gonna do for the dishes, okay? We moving along. Couple tablespoons. I could have probably gotten away with a little bit less too because I don't have a lot of beans. You know, when you're cooking in your kitchen, buy a whole bunch of spatulas. I got a lot of these. This is the easiest way I know how to refry beans. Put it in there. It's going to start frying in a second. We're going to squish it with a potato squisher. Doesn't need any seasoning because the beans was already seasoned. When we cooked it, get this rubber one so it doesn't mess up my pot. Somebody already messed up my skillet, you know. Come on. So we're going to have beans panadas, fish panadas. Salbutes with the chicken and the panucho that uses the chicken also. So we're almost ready. I just have to season up the rest of the, um, the masa and roll them into balls. And then I'm going to take a break, cool down. And then when I come back, I'm going to be frying them. We're frying everything that we're going to be eating. Assembling and frying, okay? So yes, you are going to need one of those masa squisher thingy. Let me just put the beans in this bowl and set it aside so I can take care of the corn masa. So what I have here is about four pounds left out of the five pound batch that Joe bought. Now to this I'm going to add three teaspoons of baking powder, a couple teaspoons of salt, and this is pink Himalayan sea salt, and then some ricotta. But you know what? Wait, let me do this first. Let me add some all-purpose flour because this is gonna bind it together because sometimes the masa is a little bit too wet, right? Let me get my ring off and just work this in. Now the reason why I held off on the ricotta 
is because I want to grab a small ball of this like eh, half a pound or so and just let it stay white the way that the masa dough is and then to the rest of it I'm putting the ricotta or the annatto or achiote or you can use paprika and there's a reason for doing that I'll tell you guys a little bit later so let me roll off my first big ball right here I want a few of them big but I want some of them smaller too okay the big ones is because I want that for the panucha and the salbutes and the smaller ones can be for the panades so some of them are bigger than the other ones because we don't want to be greedy we have so much stuff right and look I covered everything up here because it was a nasty fly that came in Joshua just killed it so look at this this is the bag that the thing came in the masa and that's what I'm going to use to squish all this stuff in. So for the people that are gonna come at me saying, why are you putting flour with corn? Because it holds it together, the corn that they're making nowadays, the masa is kinda damp, you know? So if you don't wanna do that, don't do that. You're just gonna have stress with squishing it. Point blank period. So I learned that from somebody, I, forgot, I think it might have been Miriam that taught me that. Because some of the stuff I learned from my aunt. But in anywho, what I'm gonna do now is set everything aside because everything's pretty much ready. It's just that when you want to serve, and also like you're having a party, you want to serve, everything's all prepared. When the people come, you start squishing off and frying. So I'm going to take a rest, charge the um, battery for my camera, because I need that battery to do the mukbang that you would have seen before this video. I keep telling you guys. And you know what? Why have you not subscribed to my channel yet? And why do you not speak to me? Put something in the comment. Tell me how your granny make it. A lot of people like to tell me that my granny don't make it like that. My granny make it like this, well, come and tell me. My granny better than your granny. <laughs> my grandma didn't used to cook too much because she had a stroke when she was 50. So her sister did all the cooking. But uh, leave me a comment, that's what I'm saying. Leave me a comment. You guys are doing great with the likes, keep it up. I'm getting like 64 likes, 62 likes. I'm like, yes. And what else? Subscribe, like, comment, share. You got it. Okay, I'll see you in an hour or so, guys. So I've rested and now it's time to assemble. So I have a piece of the dough ball, this is the masa dough ball, and I'm putting it between two pieces of plastic. I got this from the bag that the masa came in, I just washed it and cut it into two. Now let me put some tuna and then just fold it over like this. This is why some people are going to say, Barbara that's an empanada, but in Belize it's called panadis, alright? So I'm sure in other countries it's called other things. So now let's do another fish one. Squish it with the tortilla squisher, the masa squisher. Put some more fish. Don't skimp, okay? Put more if you need to put more. But don't overfill it because you don't want it to fall out when you're cooking. Let me put this one. So I have the fire on medium, okay? Now it's time to do the refried beans. And you know what? I've tried panadas with chicken, you know, cooking the chicken on the stove like stewed chicken, pick it off the bone, kind of like what we have to do for the sal salbutes. And um, it didn't come out good. Uh, well, I mean, it didn't taste great. And I think it's because it's a mind thing. I wasn't raised that way to eat it with chicken, you know? In Belize, it's always fish or beans and the fish is bony fish. I don't know if they use other fish now in Belize, but I'm talking about when I was growing up back in the late 70s, early 80s. So this one is done, fry it on both sides for about two to three minutes on medium, on low to medium heat, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and squish two because we're gonna make the panucho. So let me go ahead and get another one here. Squish that baby. And then grab the chicken because we're gonna make a sandwich out of this. And remember I told you that it's best to use the fattier side of the chicken, the legs and the thighs and stuff like that. Put this one on top. Seal it all around the edge. And I have the fire still going with my skillet of oil. And now we're going to fry. Let me make sure that my heat is good, not too high because the dough on the inside part of the panucha has to cook too, right? 
So I'm going to go ahead and put the heat on the coal so I can heat it up because it's been sitting here for an hour. Now these are ready. So let me show you how to assemble the panucho. I know people have been waiting on this. Char, hi Char. Shout out to, to my friend Char. She's like, I'm waiting on the panucho, Barbara. So put some of the coal. And this is a little bit too thick. So what I'm going to do is take some from the pot, add a little bit of water to it. You know, put it in a bowl, add a little bit of water, heat it in a microwave. Because I don't want to heat up the whole pot again. So because everything is hot, the cheese will melt. So get a cheese that melts easily, okay? Whatever cheese you like. Uh, we're using a blend of cheddar. You can use Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, Velveeta. Velveeta is not really cheese. Shh, don't tell nobody. Sprinkle some cheese. So that's one each for me and Joe. And this is what we ate in the mukbang, but sadly it was being hidden behind the bowl of veggies. Now let's go on ahead and assemble the salbutes. Squish the dough flat. Flat as you can go. And then fry it, medium to high heat. A minute or two on each side. I'm just going to do one to show you guys. You guys want to know why the skillet changed? Because I'm doing this the next day. <laughs> Top it with the chicken. Chicken smells good because Joe seasoned it well. And then this is the cabbage, tomato, and cilantro. I call it ceviche. It's just like a slaw, right? And the Italian dressing. And that's how you make the, um, the salbute. We say salbutes, the dish is called salbutes, but it doesn't mean that it's plural, right? So we say the salbutes. <laughs> Isn't this lovely? Lovely. It's hot though. Should I bite into this hot thing? No. <laughs> Go watch the mukbang. I, I put up the mukbang before this one. This is the making of the dishes. The mukbang went up before. Go watch the mukbang to watch this, all right? Thanks for watching. I love you guys. Mmm. I need cheese. We need cheese, Joe. This one needs Parmesan cheese. Mm. Hold on a second. Let me yell for Joshua. Joshua! Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're seeing me on Facebook, don't forget to follow, like, and share the page. If you're seeing me on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the page. And if you want to see me on a different platform, come and join the membership at Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash Bear Pantry Show.